Hey guys, welcome back to Coaster Brothers. In today's video, it has been a while since we've done one of these reviews sort of things. Not really a while, but it's time to do another one. Guys, last week I got the opportunity to ride Iron Gwazi, a brand new hybrid coaster located at Busch Gardens Tampa, the world's steepest hybrid coaster and North America's tallest. And guys, it is an insane coaster. I mean, it is literally probably one of the most insane coasters ever. I've already ranked it as number two in all my rankings. I'm still contemplating whether it's a better than Steel Vengeance. And I'm actually going to do another video like that. Which is better, Steel Vengeance or Iron Gwazi? Sort of like a Coaster Wars kind of thing. Um, but in today's video, we're going to be reviewing this all-new hybrid coaster. So before we get into the review, you guys probably should subscribe to the channel. You know, it really helps. And well, let's get into the review. All right, so our first category is height. Iron Gwazi stands at a height of 206 feet. And guys, that is gigantic for a hybrid coaster. Hybrid coasters usually range from 100 and 20 feet to 200 feet guys this is north america's tallest hybrid coaster so it may not be very tall compared to like giga coasters or the two strata coasters but it is definitely tall this is a tall roller coaster guys for its kind and when you're on this coaster because it um, it doesn't feel normal to be on a hybrid coaster at that height. I'm going to be giving a solid 10 because RMC really made it truly happen for this hybrid coaster to be North America's tallest. So I am going to be giving a 10. And starting off our next category, speed, not only is Iron Gwazi North America's tallest hybrid coaster, but it is also the world's fastest hybrid coaster. This coaster travels at 76 miles per hour, which is insanely fast for a hybrid coaster. Keep in mind, guys, this used to be a regular wooden coaster, but they transformed it into a beast. So for speed, I'm going to be giving a 9.5. Now, this next category is truly where Iron Gwazi shines, and that is drop. Guys, RMC made Iron Gwazi the first hybrid coaster ever to feature a beyond vertical drop of 91 degrees. Now, this is a 206-foot drop, guys. Yeah, I know. They made the drop the exact same length as the height. How did they do that? They added an extra pit at the bottom of the drop, but they made that happen. That is a phenomenal drop. It is my favorite drop on any hybrid coaster. So I think you know what I'm going to say. Drop is going to be getting a 10. Now, the next category is airtime. Now, most people, when looking at an Iron Gwazi POV, wouldn't expect to see too much airtime on this coaster. But what RMC did is hid the airtime in the elements, guys. Now, with these elements that you're seeing right now, you wouldn't expect airtime. But they have the strongest airtime in the most unexpected elements, guys. Some of those parts of the ride include entering the 480 roll or death roll. And then, as you go through the overbank curve, then going into the the um the wave turn, I got some strong airtime there. Then those those two um turns there, I got a lot of airtime. And then this section right here, I got airtime here. And then basically nearing the end of the ride is where you get most of the airtime. And that airtime is strong, guys. When you get that airtime, it is strong airtime. So RMC really did a great job with this. So for airtime, guys, of course, it's a 10. Now the next category is the overall layout. So I will be explaining the full overall layout with Iron Gwazi. So first, before you enter the lift hill, you go through this strong aggressive turn it's really whippy and then you enter the slow loud rmc lift hill which takes a little while to get up to the top but you do get there so you know you're just rising up the lift hill to 206 feet tall 91 degree drop 206 foot drop so 
Yeah, the interesting thing about this coaster is, um, this usually doesn't um happen with other RMCs, but before you drop, the lift hill slows down. So you're not going to get as much of a whip. Of course, if you're in the back, you're still going to get whipped over the drop. But in the front, as you can see, guys, you do not get whipped over that drop. But then you enter the gigantic 91 degree, 206 foot drop. Then you go into a massive outer bank turn. You get lots of airtime on this. Then you dive back down, going up into an overbank turn. Then down the 480 roll or death roll. Then into the overbank curve. And then to this very aggressive wave turn. After that, you're going to be going through these um, little wave turns. And then to the zero G stall. After that, going to a little airtime hill there. Then a, a double down, I think that's what it's called. I don't know. And then airtime hill there. Down. Then into the brake run, guys. And when you enter that brake run, it may be a short ride, but you are going to be out of breath, guys. So it has a definitely a very unique layout for RMC. Most RMCs are just airtime hill after airtime hill. This definitely packs in a punch. It has some strong original elements. That's why I love this coaster. And within those elements, they can pack in tons of airtime. So you already know what I'm going to say, guys. It's 10. All right, guys. Now, our next category is inversions. Now, Iron Gwazi has three, but technically two inversions. Those inversions are the death roll, the zero G stall, and technically the, um, the, overbank curve now the overbank curve isn't technically an inversion so we are not going to count that bush gardens tampa markets it as an inversion so they market iron guazi as having three inversions but it technically has two but those two inversions are solid now we can all agree the death roll is the highlight part of the coaster if it wasn't the wave turn or the outer or the outer bank turn it was the death roll guys the death roll at the top of that as you're going down it in the back you're gonna get whipped out of your seat literally the entire way down it is such a forceful element to have on this coaster the zero g stall i've experienced better better stalls than this one but it is definitely a good um a good stall for sure so i mean th these are really the best inversions you could get on an rmc hybrid Especially this death roll. I've never experienced an inversion like it. It is such a unique inversion. So forceful. Guys, the inversions on Iron Gwazi sure pack a punch. So for inversions, guys, I mean, it's kind of obvious. Well, not too obvious for some, but I'm going to be giving a 9. Now, guys, this next category is smoothness, and we're only going to spend a couple of seconds on this because, well, this is an RMC. And if you haven't experienced an RMC, you've got to experience it because it is the smoothest coaster manufacturer ever. The track, so smooth, never a rattle. Never a rattle with this steel topper track. Not steel topper track. It's With, with this steel track, it is definitely, definitely really smooth. So, 10. Now let's talk restraints. Now, Iron Gwazi has the classic RMC lap bars, which can be good and can be bad, unfortunately. You see, the good thing about these lap bars is that unlike other lap bars, like Intamin lap bars, um, those kind of lap bars, they don't come down during the duration of the ride. So let's say I was riding something like... um. Like Millennium Force, right? That's an Intamin Giga Coaster. Those restraints, as the ride goes on, they push down farther and farther to the point where at the end of the ride, you're stapled, even if you weren't stapled at the beginning. With these RMC restraints, they are not like that. They stay in place. But that's because they are very, very heavy restraints. These are bulky restraints, but you can get easily stapled in them, unfortunately, and, yeah, but they aren't too bad of restraints. Um, I do find that they can be a little bit restricting, but as long as you, as long as you pull them down a certain way, you won't get stapled. It, it obviously depends on your size and stuff, but for me, guys, I don't mind these restraints at all. So, an eight. 
our next category is operations. And the reason we have this category is basically how long do the dispatches take? How well do they do the dispatches? Can they do it safely, properly, and can they do it fast? So for operations, guys, Iron Gwazi is good, bad, awesome, and terrible. Because that's what I experienced in my one day riding Iron Gwazi. You see, in the morning when I first rode Iron Gwazi, the operations were splendid. They were like, within 35 seconds to a minute, they were dispatching these trains really fast, really fast. But then as the day, as the day progressed, the operations were getting worse. And around 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon, one time I waited 3 minutes. One time it took 3 minutes for them to check the restraints, for them to load the whole train, and then for them to finally press the button and dispatch the train. And guys, those are not, not good, um... Not good operations. So I averaged it out. I timed about eight times since I went on Iron Grazi 12 times each time. Not every time, but for 12 runs, I timed it. And the average, the average dispatch time came out to 54 seconds. And that is good, guys. See, the majority of the time, they did do awesome dispatches. But there were a couple of times that they took a while. Like this video you're watching right now. Like, you know what I mean. Um, so for operations, I'm going to be giving a 9. Finally, park it's located at. Now, the reason I have this category on here, guys, is basically how worth it is it... Like, how worth it is it to go... Um, how worth it is it to go to Bush Gardens, Tampa, like just for Iron Gwazi? Like if you had to just go for Iron Gwazi, what else is what else is there to do at the park? You know, what other stuff could you possibly do at Bush Gardens, Tampa? And guys, let me tell you, Bush Gardens, Tampa is a park you could not get bored at. They have some classic other coasters like Montu, Shikra, and Cheetah Hunt, but there's stuff to do besides the coasters. They have a, a lot of different experiences you can do, like the safari, and much more stuff, guys. So even if Iron Gwazi wasn't at Bush Gardens Tampa, I'd still recommend you visit the park. This is an amazing, well-rounded park. It is an awesome atmosphere. So for park, it's located. I mean, guys, come on. It's Bush Gardens Tampa. I'm going to be giving it 10. So now for the final score of Iron Gwazi, it came out to a nine, to nine out of ten. But that's just the score that it came out to be. My personal score of this phenomenal coaster is a ten, guys. This is now my favorite RMC behind Steel Vengeance. It is my favorite roller coaster ever. Guys, Iron Gwazi is awesome. And once you get the chance, you gotta get on this coaster. This should be on your bucket list. If it's not, well, I'm sorry. Um, but you gotta do some more looking at the Iron Gwazi and seeing how amazing this coaster is. So that's just my score of Iron Gwazi. I wanna hear yours. What is your score of Iron Gwazi? How would you rate this coaster if you've been on it? And let me know down in the comments all of that. Any other coasters you want me to go check out, let me know in the comments. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be checking out Pantheon on its opening weekend, March 25th. It's an all-new um, Intamin Blitz coaster located, um, located at um, Busch Gardens Williamsburg that is opening up then. And I'm really excited for that. Hopefully, I'll be able to get there. Um, but yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and I will see you guys on our next coaster video. Stay on the thrill side of life.